What's up, everybody? Welcome to this week's episode of the Just Saying Podcast. I'm your host, Justin Martindale, and today's guest is a very special friend of mine. Um, you know her, you love her. She is a four-time wow. Grammy nominee. Uh, she is a mother. She is a... And a slut! No, a just kidding. Sl- <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> you heard her. It's Cardi Wilson, everybody. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, what an intro. I know, I know. I love uh, that you just set yourself up I for do that. It to myself. Yes. <laughs> you were not you were not a slut. However, you did remind me that you did pose for Playboy. Right. And definitely a slut in the past life. Really? Yeah, I think so. Like some sort of like succubus, concubine. I don't know. Like I think I've always been drawn to like the sixties, kind of like everyone love each other. Mm-hmm. But free love. Free free love. What a time. Not so much now. Not so much now. <laughs> Well, I'm so excited you're here. Um, I met you on Jeff Lewis Live. I you're, know, I know. You're a regular on there. I actually met you on when we went to Halloween Horror Nights. That's right. That's the first time we met. Which I never thought that I would meet Carney Wilson from Wilson Phillips at <laughs> Halloween Horror Nights. <laughs> I was so w- wimpy that night. You were okay. I was okay. You were good. You you. How many of the mazes did you do? You didn't do that Four? many. No, no, you I, did. You did. The bug one, I wouldn't do. Yeah. But I did, I did, I think I did everything else. I you think. did everything pretty, pretty that was fun. spot on. Yeah. It was really, really good. It was just walking down like the street part where uh-huh. um, they would come out and get, and jump scare you that it really pissed me off. Mm-hmm. It I, always does. Cause I'm like a theater miner with a fake ax. I'm like, get out of here. Well, see, I, I see, I can't even, I'm just a scaredy cat. So like mm-hmm. it, it freaked me out. Yeah. It actually made me angry. <laughs> Like I, I, but you saw my reaction. Yeah, I was like a lot you know, of screaming. Fuck you. Yeah, I, mean, it was, yeah. It was, I could not like no censor. Yeah. Just like you let him have I it. Know. I hated all of them. Yeah, and I hate birds. And then I saw that big fucking oh the owl pelican, person or, no, thing, the, um, the crow, mm-hmm. that crow. Oh the big yeah. That was not no thanks. Not pretty. No thanks. No. Well, we are going to have a very fun. I mean, this episode is so nineties. Oh, good. Um, and it just kind of happened that way because um, over the weekend was 90s con in Connecticut. Yeah. Which I feel like that's where you would have 90s con. It's where I almost went, but okay. You almost went? It's a long story. Oh, do you want to tell? No. Okay. Nope. What did you do? I didn't do anything. <laughs> <laughs> I told him I did Playboy. No. Oh, no, no, no. You didn't punch the mom from no. Seventh Heaven? Ah! <laughs> um, oh my God, it would have been really fun to go there. No, just sometimes it works out and sometimes it doesn't. For I get just, that. For different reasons, but um, I wanted to go. So I almost went. Yeah. And so, it looked, I mean, it looked insane. Now I yeah. kind of dressed a little 90s today. I wanted to give a you little- You look cute. A little like, you know- You look handsome. 90s, thank you. Um- and uh, you smell delicious too. Thanks, Scentbird. <laughs> I am very it's vanilla, black pepper, yeah, boho boco. I believe it's what it's called. But There's um, a lot of names in there. You, I mean, in one of the most, I mean, legendary girl groups of all time. Yeah. How did Wilson Phillips start for our listeners? Um, we were smoking bong loads. Really, mm-hmm. really on, on my sister's floor. I had just graduated high school, so I was full on stoner. Yeah. And um, I was obsessed with Harmony. Uh-huh. And I said to Wendy and China, because um, China came over one day, there was actually an idea that, okay, so you know her parents are from the Mamas and Papas. Right? Yes, of course. So, so um, And yours, Ma- the Beach Boys. Right. Yeah. So Mama Cass's daughter, Owen, who I've known forever and China has known, Owen had an idea to get like the 60s singers, kids together to do a charity record and release it and raise money for charity. So, um, it, and the funny thing, it was going to be like an anti-drug and there we were getting stoned. Well, there you go. Yep. <laughs> Sounds like but, a Saved by the Bell episode if I've ever seen one. There you go. <laughs> Total, like opposite of what you should be doing, but mm-hmm. we were, mm-hmm. and, um, and we're, uh, we were just, we, we heard from China and she's like, Owen has an idea and nobody else wants to do it. It was like, we asked the Jerry Garcia kids. We asked Donovan's kids, Zappa's, because we grew up with with Moon and Dweezil. Mm-hmm. And so, um, but nobody wanted to do it. So China and Owen came over one day and we sat in our room and harmonized. And we taught China how to sing harmony. We were teaching Owen stuff and we were just, just vocalizing. And it was like a really 
magical sound. It really is. Yeah, and my mom heard it through the through the through the floor in her bedroom and came downstairs and says, "What are you guys doing?" And we said, "We're harmonizing." And she's like, "There's something really really great about the sound." Yeah. And we said, "Yeah, but you know, what do we do?" So we called China's mom who took us to a producer who worked with um the Pointer Sisters and and Barbara Streisand, big producer Richard Perry. And so um and we went to his house and sang him like five words from Stevie Nicks song. And then we were led to our record company and our co-writer, Glenn Ballard, who's a huge, huge music writer and producer. And we just, for four years, we wrote songs, made a record, got a record deal. And that's it. And what a time. I don't think that could have been, I don't know. I just feel like that was such a magical time for that sound to come out because it is so like pinnacle 90s. You know what I mean? It's, we were ready for it. I think yeah. it, I think there was something very pure yeah. and um, it was very organic, just- but Enchanting. The way, enchanting, yeah. Because when you heard it, it was like, ooh, you know, yeah. it, it 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 was calming, but it was um, pop at the same time. Mm-hmm. And then of course we, we were- Empowering told, for women. And empowering for women, of course. And that was sort of the, the real, I mean, girl groups have been big all mm-hmm. these years, but I'm not sure if- I mean, like you think of the Supremes and, but like, I don't know. I think we brought this sort of pop element thing that really wasn't happening. And, um, and then if a few girl groups were like quickly behind us and with us, mm-hmm. but it was, it, we were lucky. We were, it, the, the stars were aligned. Well, and I think it was like, everyone talks about like Nepo babies and stuff yeah. like that. But I think, I mean, the Mamas and the Papas and the Beach Boys are like, yeah. Rock royalty. Yeah. You know be, what I mean? They'll be around forever. And everyone wants like huge fans, huge followings, uh, hits after hits after hits. Mm-hmm. Still, still to this day, yeah. you know, that people listen to them. And I think when you got the the, the kids of those, you're like, okay, they're up, they know what they're doing. Right. You know, they've been taught right. What well, we we got a lot no of no auto tune, you know? No, no, yeah. no, no. And when we when we perform, we're like, there are no tapes. Like mm-hmm. we we sing. Mm-hmm. Um, but we got a lot of slack. We were like they're riding on the coattails. They're not whatever. But I, I, we kept, we kept saying like, well, we know we write our own songs and we, you know, we're, we're, we're singing on mm-hmm. stage. It's, it's not fake. It's not Millie Vanilli, which was like right around <gasps> oh, that time. What a time. Right? Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> that was were you not there? Good. Were you we, in like an award show when that happened? No, or? but we were like, when it was revealed, we were like, whoa, like yeah. they were, they weren't record label mates. I don't think they were on our label, No, <clears throat> but Technotronic was, I remember that pump up the jam. Oh it, yeah. That was the SBK and uh, Vanilla Ice. So our vanilla record, ice. Vanilla Ice, but our record company was like, they they had just formed and they wanted to like, you know, shout off the rooftops. Like we have, we have Wilson Phillips, we have Vanilla Ice, we have, and they wanted to be successful. They put a lot of money into the group, but um, yeah, like weird, weird. I mean, we, we knocked Vogue out of the number one spot for Hold On. I mean, Madonna's Vogue uh-huh. was at number one. Oh, Madonna's and, Vogue. Well, I think it meant Vogue. Sorry. Yes. Madonna's Vogue. Vogue. No, but, but Hold On, Hold On to Your Love, and Vogue, yeah. and Hold On. Yeah. We're on the charts at the same time too. What How, a confusing time so, to hold on. Everyone please, just needed a grip. Everybody, everybody was at Hold On. It was so <laughs> weird. It was but, the nineties. Hold on. Hold on. Yeah. But oh, it was such a great time. It was so freaking magical. I can't believe that we even did that. I mean, we were selling like 150,000 records a week. God. Stupid. Do you have any like, um, what were some of your favorite moments, memories of that when, when, when you guys kind of blew up with hold on? Yeah. Well, probably when I was in Japan, we, we went to, we did this festival called Kabuki Rocks and it was all these, it was so hilarious. All the traditional Japanese makeup, the mm-hmm. kabuki, whatever it is. I never even heard about it. What a kabuki. kabuki yeah. It's an art so, form in right. Japan. Yeah. But I had no idea what it was. So we went there, no idea what we were doing. We were just told like, we were like, literally like, like robots for them, like puppets, like mm-hmm. go here, go there. And we went to many, many places, like sometimes five or six cities in a day to, uh. to promote. And then we got the bill for the private jets years later. That was real fun. Oh, Thanks years a lot. later? Oh, years later, we were like, wait a minute, why is there a $1.5 million charge that we're not, that we're recouping? And we had no idea. They're like, oh, these are all the private jets. That, and they said, we said, well, we, we, you said to us, you were going to take us mm-hmm. to go to one more hospital or one more visit visit for a radio station to get the ad. I mean, that's that was all part of the plan of launching this record company. So we were actually part of that. Mm-hmm. But I'm, I don't regret it because we did have great success, but it was like, 
in Japan, we went to do this festival and I think it was fixed, but we did win. <laughs> I think it was fixed because Bobby McFerrin with Don't Worry, Don't Be Worry, Happy. Be Happy. Right? Yes. He was so fucking pissed off at us. Bobby McFerrin was pissed? He was pissed? so mad. He hates us He now. told us, don't worry, be happy. Exactly. He was not happy. <laughs> what a hypocrite. Because he lost <laughs> and we won this hold on one for a single of the year. And so, he wanted Don't Worry, Be Happy to yeah, win. Well, yes. obviously it's his song. Yeah. So he was mad at you. He was pissed off. <laughs> I know I can't even, but I still have, <laughs> I still have the award and it's like the heaviest, biggest award I have. Mm -hmm. I have all my awards, you know, in my house displayed because I'm so proud of them. Good. You should be. And yeah. also, hey, Bobby McFerrin, suck it. Yeah. So no, Bobby McFerrin, it's time to be happy after yeah, all these years. Yeah, my God. Didn't he have like the smiley faces, like his he emblem? He fucking frozen. Let it go. Yeah. Just let it go, let Bobby. Let it go, baby. God. So, um... <sighs> That so funny. that's, I, I, I love that. We're going to talk more 90s. And also, I feel like I fangirled on you when I met you because... Why? Well, because I was a, a, a huge fan. For Still am. I love you to death. And like, I, John Hill and I grew up in Texas together. <sighs> and huge 90s kids, right? And he introduced me to... Mom Jeans on Sirius XM. I love it. And I've talked to I've talked about Mom Jeans. I was listening to it this morning. Yeah. And you guys are on it. And it's just, it's just such a time of music that I just don't think we will ever get again. I know. I I, I think I agree with you. Right? I just listen yeah. to I and I love, I like there's certain songs I like now. But it's just... It's not the same. It's not the same. Well, like Ariana Grande just came out with her new record and, mm -hmm. and there's a really good song. Um, oh, I can't remember the name. Oh, it's, um, it's, uh, it's the single. It's yes the new and? one. No, it's... a. Uh, uh, what what is it? It's one word, not supernatural. She always has one word or a what, comma. Right, right, right. right. <laughs> um, comma. It's, yeah, it's it's. She's, um, it, the production is really good. It's and uh, she is fucking phenomenal. Yeah, yeah. We can't be friends. Oh my God, that is so good. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's the production is insane and her voice is amazing. So I love her. I like Ariana Grande too because she gets references. And I love that. So her video is for Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind. So it's oh, like nice. a nod to good, that. Good. Yes, and was a nod to Paul Abdul, uh, Cold Hearted Snake. Um, I like that. Was it Cold Hearted or Cold Hearted Snake? Cold Hearted. Cold, cold right? Hearted. Cold yeah. Hearted, yeah. And so she just gets but references. Her, but her voice. I know. I mean, she's, she's you know. She's, she's growing up. She's really great, though. She's a great yeah. singer. Uh -huh. And my, my daughter, Lola, just loves her. Mm -hmm. So she's like, mom, you got to hear the song. Mom. So she's always sending me, sending me stuff. And, and I like Harry Styles, but, mm -hmm. but you're right. The music is different, but I, see, I'm, I'm going to be 56. So mm -hmm. it's like, I'm stuck in the seventies. So like for me, it's like seventies and eighties and I like nineties and I'm part of that era, which is really a trip. Cause I can't, yeah. I don't, you know, I, I don't know. I'm, I'm forever. I'm like Fleetwood Mac Carpenters. We're done. That's all I want. <laughs> That's all I want. You're the Laurel Canyon lady. I am so Laurel Canyon. <laughs> Although that's kind of 60s, but like, yeah. you know, but I love, I love the 70s. But that was like a time, I think the 70s was, you know, the doors and yeah. all of them lived up there. Sure. Mamas and the Papas, didn't yep. they live up oh, there? Mama yeah, Cass Mama big, Cass was up there. was big with that. And, um, you know, Mama Cass's daughter, Owen, who's a really dear, one of my best friends, oh, cool. just wrote a book called My Mama Cass. And she waited all this time. She's gonna be 57 and it's, it's spectacular. Wow. Yeah. It's really like the real truth, not ham sandwich shit. You know, like the real, real, yeah, real what stuff. What was ham sandwich shit? I, I remember hearing that. Someone, yeah. Oh, they said she choked on it. Yeah. You want to hear the weirdest thing you've ever heard? I mean, no, yes, it's my hear, podcast. No, get ready. This is beyond. Okay. This is beyond the beyond. So when I was 18, I went to do this photo session because I had got an agent and I, I wanted to be an actress and all that shit right before Wilson Phillips started. And I do this photo session and there's this photographer and then there's the makeup artist. Well, it's funny. The makeup artist was the man and the photographer was the woman. So okay. he was doing my mascara and, you know, and he says to me, you know, I have to tell you something. This is going to be really weird, but um, I saw your your article. There was, a, there was an article in Rolling Stone about famous kids. This was all separate from Wilson Phillips, but mm -hmm. basically he's, we had mentioned about mamas and papas, beach boys, whatever. And um, he said, you know, I just want you to know that um, I, I've been living with guilt all these years. And I said, what are you talking about? He's like, I, I made the ham sandwich that I made the ham sandwich in England that Mama Cass took a bite of. And I thought I killed her all these years. <laughs> what the fuck? 
And I was like, what is this? Deli confessions? What is this? I'm, I'm like, I'm, I'm getting lightheaded here. <laughs> Wait for. <laughs> no, I'm serious. He made the famous ham sandwich that and in London where she took a bite, left it by her bedside and they came and she actually had a heart, a heart attack. attack and died. But they thought that she, she choked, choked on a ham sandwich. That's right. Is that the crazy? Is that the craziest thing? He goes, I, I can't believe that, you know, but I had to tell you that because I lived 30 or 40 years thinking that I killed her. And I'm like, well, yeah, you didn't. You just made a sandwich, but you but know. But you know what? This was before was, food allergies. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> you never know. There could have been gluten or a, 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 oh, a, a, a tangy mustard. Yeah, right. You know? That, that, yeah. So that was really. That is crazy. How weird. Like, like weird. had to get that out. Yeah. Vent. Yeah. I was like, thank you for that. That's, that's intense. I can't wow. believe you did that. But that, that was cool. That reminds me of another story that I can't put my finger on. What is it? Where someone was like. I did. Uh, we'll cut that out. I can't remember what it was. The, the Judy Garland from Drag Race. Yes, that's what it was. What? Yes, yes, yes. Thank you, Land. Uh, there's a story of um, it was the there was a contestant on Drag Race. It was like the it was the uh, makeover challenge. The military makeover. Yeah. So there was like a, they, when they made over these military guys Ooh. and the what was the what was the actual story? He said I killed Judy Garland. Oh. He said that he gave Yes, he was like I gave oh, I gave Judy Garland the pills that ended up oh, killing God. her, and it was like they didn't edit it out of the. But did they? Did he really give her the pills? I think so. Oh, God. But then, what were the pills? I was like sleeping pills. Oh, what were the pills? I, I mean, oh, if right. that's if that's a show, what a were ton, the pills? Right, a yeah. ton of pills. Guess those pills. I <laughs> guess those pills. <laughs> Jesus, if you stay awake. You get to go to the bonus round. <laughs> no, that's uh, that's uh, th there was a lot of that. Yeah. Oh, I'm sure. Yeah. God, it's such a wild time. But I know. Um, so let's get back into 90s con. I mean, it was a time. Here's the thing. I loved the 90s. I've had Jody Sweeten on. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, I I feel like I grew up in the 90s. I was born in the 80s, but I grew up in the 90s, you right, know. Right. Um, and so I'm looking at like the cast of This Is Boy Meets World. Yeah. Uh, the cast of Step okay. by Step showed up. Here's 98 Degrees. Yep. Jeff Timmons can still get it, you guys. I I said it. He, does he still have that 98 degrees tattoo on his arm? Oh, he covered it you up. You guys, I presented an award with 98 degrees and I had them slap me on the butt. It was like the Billboard Music Awards Call or something. I one more day. Yeah, I know. I, I made them slap me because I was like, when I had lost like 160 pounds, they wanted me to come out and you can find it on YouTube. But it, I came out and I'm like, I just want you guys to slap me on the butt. It was 98 degrees. And I think Nick Lachey gave me a big spanking on stage. Isn't that, wasn't that weird? <laughs> Isn't that fabulous? How'd it feel? Fabulous. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. You're like, I, I just had him slap my ass. And I want um, it Who else was there? I think the cast of Sabrina the Teenage Witch, Dawson's yeah. oh, Creek. Oh, by the way, I did appear on Teen uh, Sabrina the Teenage Witch. You did with uh, Caroline Ray? You know what? <clears throat> yes, but I, I was an extra and it was directed by Anson Williams from... You know, uh, whatever from Happy Days. Oh. He, he was he played. Uh, what was his name? Potsy. Yes, Potsy. And, um, and he he directed the episode that I was in on Sabrina the Teen. I still get royalties for like thirty eight cents. Bro, for I got two checks today. Both were one penny. Yeah, one penny. What in the hell what is strike? that about? Like what? Uh, right. It's uh, so weird. But isn't uh, that weird? Yeah. It's. I'm like. I just threw them in the trash. Like I was just like, like what am why? I gonna cash it? A, Thank you. Yeah, but I'm like. What? How embarrassing. Know, it's so weird. Um, but, Why do you uh, do that? Who else? Uh, uh, Andrew Keenan was there. Do you remember Andrew Keenan? Yeah, yeah. He, but remember, he was in like some weird like cult oh. like back in the day. So I'm like, he I wonder if he's- house? No, he was in oh, no, like, no. he was in like a whole bunch oh, of Andrew, like- Oh, Andrew Keegan. He was yeah. in, yeah, this is him. He was in like 10 Things I Hate About You. That's him now. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He's still handsome. Yeah, but I mean, he had like weird, some like weird cult in Malibu or something. Oh, okay. Yeah. I don't know about that. Hey, Just Sayers, spring is here. It is my birthday this week. And you know what I love? Wine. And I want you to get some of yours today. So here, I'm going to let you in a little secret. I have found the most personalized wine club that has amazing wines, exclusive perks, all available at your fingertips. And it is called First Leaf. Uh, as a First Leaf member, I get to discover new wines that I'm guaranteed to enjoy. That's because First Leaf gets to know your own unique preferences. And it's so easy. All you have to do is just go online, firstleaf.com, and they 
make it a game for you. You get to take a quiz that uh, fits all the wines, the flavors, how adventurous you want to get in discovering your new wines, uh, wines you're familiar with, if you like bubbly, if you like rosés, um, what kind of flavors, notes you like, and they just kind of put it all together, mash it all up, and give you your own delivery right at your door. Um, best of all, I get to choose when I want my box. I can put it on pause whenever I want to, and you get it delivered and how often you get your new assortments of wine. I got to discover wines from all over the world. I got an Argentinian Malbec, which was delicious. I got a spicy Zinfandel. I got the Syrah and also its friend, the Petite Syrah. Uh, I got to experience a beautiful rosé that I saved for a Sunday afternoon, all available at your door at firstleaf.com. So join the club today and discover new wines you'll love with First Leaf. Go to tryfirstleaf.com slash Saiyan, S-A-Y-I-N to get your first box. That's tryfirstleaf, T-R-Y-F-I-R-S-T-L-E-A-F dot com slash Saiyan. Tryfirstleaf.com slash Saiyan. You're welcome. Uh, the cast of Step by Step honored Suzanne Summers, and because uh, she passed away last year. I know. I, I, knew, and, I knew her. I knew uh, her. Uh, and they were asking what was some of her best moments were. And she, did you know she bought everyone a thigh master on in the cast? She was Makes a good, sense. She was a good person. That was a nineties, nineties lady. I have a funny story about her. Okay, here comes another one, but it's real juicy. Okay, easy on the word juicy. Okay, <laughs> I I know you're not going to be upset. I know you won't, Suzanne. <laughs> I went to Vegas one time mm -hmm. and um, we saw her show in Vegas. This was- Suzanne uh, Summer's show? She had a show in Vegas. Like a variety show? No, she was singing. Okay. It was like a it was like a Wayne Brady type of fun, you oh, know. Oh, got it, got it, got it. Like an evening with Suzanne Summers. Exactly. At the Sahara. <laughs> exactly. It might've been the Sahara. Anyway, might've been. So went there and this is when I was like right at my last days of my drinking. Like I was really- really drinking a lot. Mm -hmm. And I was really partying. We went to Vegas and we went to go see her and we were like, we had front row seats and there she is, you know, she's kicking, she's doing her thing. And all of a sudden she kicks and she's wearing these, like, she's wearing um, a leotard, you know, and basically she kicked and her, the whole left side of her vagina was sticking out of her leotard. Wow. For, for like, like minutes. And it, no, Nobody could even deal with, I mean, her actual. So she took the step by step and <laughs> lip by lip came out. <laughs> her left lip was hanging out of her fucking leotard on stage. And I, I first I was looking oh, at do I see Chrissy had a moment um, on stage and it was, and it was, and it was, and then I, I don't know what happened, but someone, I can't remember cause I was drinking, but I was not, I was drunk, but I knew what a, what a crotch, I knew what it looked like and God bless her heart. She was the nicest, most, um, positive person. I loved her. Um, we got to do, uh, we did a women's lecture, like we lectured women for empowerment and stuff. And, uh -huh. And uh, we used to do some of the same lectures with people. Is that and, the one you went to with Demi Lovato in Florida? No, no, that same was thing? no, no, that was that was real recent. But uh -huh. um, this was uh, years ago, and we we showed up at the same thing for women's empowerment. But then, um, and then I hosted the talk, and then she was on the talk one day, mm. and she's just she was just a a, a really great a great human being mm -hmm. and a hard worker, and you know just the best. And she said to me, um, she said like the key. I said, you, you've been through a lot, you know, can't, everything. Yeah. And she goes, the key is having sex like every single day. Good and for I, her. I was like, what? God. It sounded horrible. I was like, what? And because her, her husband loved, they just had a very sexual thing. It was well, like- yeah, really, she fell out of her big. leotard yeah. in yeah, Vegas. Yeah, I know, I know. Yeah. <laughs> it was a little too much sex. Yeah, I know. Right. So anyway. Well, good for her. God bless her. I mean, if there's ever a-, a <laughs> An advocate for Women's History Month. It's Suzanne Summers. It's Suzanne Summers all the way. Yeah. So may you rest. We love you. Don't be mad at me. I know. But it, it was pretty fascinating because I feel like you see you see these people on television growing up and you yeah. see them in reruns. Yeah. And then you see them go to like 90s con and you're like, oh God. <laughs> Yeah, it's weird. It's so it's, bizarre. And to see how like how some of them age. That's what I mean. Right, right, right. Yeah, like, and right. I'm not trying to be like age shaming. No, no, like, no. Hell, it's we're all getting older. It's a thing. Well, of course. But no, like, I mean, it's like ooh. I mean, look at this. Speaking of vagina, it looks like I have one right under my chin. Like, look at this. It looks like an actual crotch. Look. 
Look, watch. I'm gay. I don't want to see it. Can you see? <laughs> anyway, no, you don't want to see it. All I have to go is this. No, I, you look. It's fucking horrible. Um, anyway, I'm like, but how much better? Hi. I haven't had any plastic surgery and I'm, I'm, it's, you look gorgeous. It's really time. Are you it's kidding time. me? But you're going to, I'm going to, the next time I see you, you're just going to be like, I hey, know. Justin. I'm like, Jesus. <laughs> Carney. My husband is so against it. He's oh. like, just age gracefully. I'm like, it's not graceful, but yeah. whatever. Yeah. But um, yeah, it is a trip to see people that you've seen on TV and you, you grew up with age. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, it's, it's like, what's weird is you see them now yeah. in their, their, like I'm trying to remember, like Britney Spears. Britney Spears started like '99, I believe, or '98, '99. Yeah. And I just saw she was trending on X or something, and I was like, Oh God, what does she do now? Yep. And there was a video clip of her doing um, "Crazy," the irony. And um, they were like, she was 17 years old when she did this, and I'm like, Oh my wow. God, that's the Britney. Like we were all like love and right, remember and right. stuff, and you're like 17. <laughs> you know what's weird? Apparently. Brittany, Christina Aguilera, and Justin Timberlake interviewed Wilson Phillips back in the day in 1990 when they were Mickey Mouse Club. Yes, but I can't find the clip and I can't remember. I <laughs> I can't remember. Were you like drunk or on I, pills? No, this no. was this is. I was straight. It was. I I was not. I wasn't getting stoned. I was. I was like pretty sober. And my sister said we were trying to find the clip, but she goes, "Don't you remember they interviewed us? They had a little notepad, and I just can't. I can't remember. And I was the one who remembered everything, like all the radio stations, yeah. and all the stuff, all the details, and I can't remember. Damn, isn't that even cool? Oh, that would be a really cool clip. Yeah. Like, I'm going to wow. find it. I'm yeah. going to find it. Well, speaking of uh, Justin Timberlake, this is over the weekend. Uh, Justin Timberlake played the will turn and surprised yes. everybody with NSYNC. Yes. Yes. My sister, I have a, my sister had her birthday like a couple weeks ago. She Did she a, go? She, no, she was the hugest NSYNC fan. So yeah, one, yeah. one, oh. one of her uh, birthdays, I had Lance actually like surprised her with a oh, video. Nice. And I was like, someone wants to say happy birthday. And it was Lance. Oh, nice. And she lost it. I, I missed her on her birthday this year. We were playing phone tag back and forth because we always call each other and um, for our birthdays. And I talked to her yesterday and the first thing she asked me was, did you go to that show? And I'm like, no, it, like it was kept a secret. Did not know about it. It was. And so who got tickets to this thing? Like, I don't know. Like Chrissy Teigen. <laughs> that's like, that's the only person did I she knew. Go? Chrissy yeah, Teigen she was went? there. Yeah. Wow, I know. lucky. Yeah. And I'm friends with Joey Fatone. Yeah. I mean, good friends. He's one of my friends. And he didn't tell you? No. He's been on tour, though. He's on with, he's out with AJ mm -hmm. from Backstreet Boys. Yeah. Yeah, now they're all Wait, friends. Wait, is he Backstreet or is he in sync? No, AJ's he's back Backstreet. God, I get them all fucking confused. Oh, no, you have, no. Yeah, I, I was a Backstreet Boy fan. I love Still them. Am. I know, I love them. Love in sync too, Lance, love, relax. Love, yeah. right, love them both. Yes. But Joey's my, my boy. He's, yeah. he's my friend. He's we have a sweetheart. A, he is so funny. We we've done a lot of TV shows together, but he's like we have a really funny relationship. Like I'll I'll just like send him a picture, and I'm just like, <laughs> and that's my picture to him. We just send pictures, and we go fuck you, wait, and that's our really <laughs> so did, funny. Wait, uh, did he do the Mass Singer too? Yeah, he did. So he did. You all have been on the Mass Singer. Yeah, well, almost everyone. The three little sheep, right? Were the, you all the sheep? Yep, we were the lambs. The three lambs. That was the hardest thing I've ever done. Besides, Can you? Besides childbirth. That well, was, right. <laughs> actually, I had a C-section. That <laughs> was childbirth than right. the mass singer. <laughs> and chopped. Right. What's harder? Chopped, <laughs> the mass singer, or you know, childbirth? Uh... I don't know. Can you, do you know all the other contestants on the show or is it like, no. it's all under wraps? No, you've never, it's, it is, wow, are they strict. Yeah. I mean, you are I, sequestered. I heard it was, but like. You have the masks, like you can't show your ankles. You can't show the color of your skin. Oh, those were the days, you am can't. I right? Pilgrims? <laughs> those oh, were the women, days. Women had to cover up or else they were witches. <laughs> Pilgrims. <laughs> Jesus. Um, but that's what it felt like. It was like. It was weird. Like we had a sweatshirt, don't talk to me. <laughs> they make you wear a sweatshirt that says, don't talk to me. And then like the little like gas chamber masks. And oh. then um, you have to wear gloves. And do they test you for like claustrophobia or no, anything? But no, they're I just got, like, get no, in this I have news for you. submarine. <laughs> I had to like talk myself out of almost fainting on the stage because first of all, it was boiling hot. I'm sure. The mask was- No fans or anything in there? Well, they had, no, not inside. No, but like, no, they didn't have like little built-in fans, but the hair and makeup, they would say the most you would go with your mask on would be no more than seven to 10 minutes at a, in one stretch. And thank God. And they, that was 
by design. So you put it on and then go out put and do the song. Put it on and you would sing and then they would stop for a break and then the hair and makeup would come up with a big um, handheld fan and hold it up you know, like this. It was really hard. First of all, the you couldn't breathe. It was mm-hmm. very, very hot. Um, there were the two, you know, the eyes and then there was the mouth and they had like little holes in it. It was extremely, and the mask was very, very heavy. Mm-hmm. Um, it was, you know, like, heavy. So the yeah. whole costume was like at least 30 pounds, 40 pounds. The mask was about 36 inches. I measured it. It was, you know, almost three feet wide. And um, it was just very confining and no peripheral vision. No. And then like you would sing and, you know, the microphone was, the mouth was up here, but I'm here. Uh-huh. So I couldn't, I had to hold the microphone here. So it was, it was weird. Oh, right. Cause you're in the, in the in costume. The, yeah, yeah. In the costume. And so, you know, everything is, the eyes are this big, mm-hmm. you know, the mouth. So it was really, really weird. It's bizarre. And they had to have, you know, someone walk and hold your hand. So you, and then like you'd walk and then like everything was like, it was like gone with Quicksand. the wind. It yeah. Was, you're a petticoat and all petticoat, that. Yeah. Like you turn and then like, it was like delayed reaction. Like you turn and then it would follow you. But it was, it was fun. Yeah. I had like leg cramps for five weeks. I like, Something happened to my muscles and my calves after that. It was really weird. Oh, it was hard. It was work. so cute though seeing y'all up there together though. But we did well. You guys did do we well. We did, and we were really original with the harmony and stuff. Yeah, I think they really wanted us to win. I do. Who won that season? Amber Riley from Glee. I mean, how are you gonna? I mean, how do you compete with a gospel singer? I know. Fuck me, you yeah. can't. You just yeah. can't. And she deserved it. But but. And she's going on Broadway doing the preacher's wife. Good. I know she's she's magnificent. I know but it should have been a tie. <laughs> oh, they should do a mass singer tie. They should have been. Mm-hmm. Should have been a tie. God. She loved us. We loved her. But you know, it's hard to come in second. I mean, it's fine. But at least we won Kubuki Rocks. That's okay. Yeah, that's fine. You're First totally. place in Japan. Um, well, here is some forgotten '90s fashion trends that Gen Z are still obsessing over. Now, I feel. Every generation does this. I remember in the 90s, the 70s were big. Like right. a lot of like bell bottoms yep. were back. Got them back. All of the like crocheted tops Love. and the flowers in the hair and yes. all that stuff. Yes, yes. But these are some fashion Beads. tips that are still coming back. Uh, slip dresses, which, okay. I mean, if you're, if you're Halle size one. <laughs> Halle Berry, yeah. You can. That's Halle Berry. Yeah, that the Soul Train Awards in 1995. It is a minimalist look that's elegant and alluring. No matter what decade you're wearing oh, it in. She is so beautiful. It's actually dumb. I know. Like just, I'm going to wear a, a, a black slip dress. But see, here's the thing now. I feel like everyone's just naked now. That's not human. I, but like, that's not human. Let's I start would, with that canvas. I would like to see somebody in a slip dress, not just like, here is my my mesh right. <laughs> outfit. Right. Like like Kanye's wife or whatever that is. Yeah. She's just like, here, it's here it is. It's a little UFO meets, you know. Well, I mean, yeah. Suzanne Summers would be like, at a girl. <laughs> At a girl, this, but that 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 is actually just lingerie, basically. Yes. Yeah, but just I remember lingerie. I remember when this was like a thing. When so you wanted to come back? You're saying you, I think it's fine. Yeah, I mean it's I mean it's simple. I get it. I, but it, yeah, I guess it is lingerie. But it's it's lingerie to me. I mean, if you can, I guess if you, mm-hmm. I you know wear whatever you want to wear. God damn it, I'm tired of anyone telling us what to wear. Yeah, Who, who's this one? This oh, yeah. is uh, oh Dustin Diamond, R.I.P. Yeah, yeah. uh, plaid flannel shirts. Wait, plaid... he died. Yeah, when? Like two years ago, oh. three years ago. Oh right, what happened? A lot. Uh oh. Yeah. Wait, I forgot that he died. Yeah. That's sad. I know he wasn't at '90s. Con. He was troubled, right? Yes, very much so. That's sad. Uh, it was like uh, drugs, and I think he, and then he like went into porn for like a hot minute. Oh. And he was then, troubled yeah. soul. Yeah. He was a troubled soul. I actually pranked him. <laughs> Wait, what? I I had there was a pilot. Uh, <laughs> there I'm was sorry. a pilot that my at the time friend who I thought was being a good friend set me up for this like prank show that never happened, and I had to go audition to be his assistant. Oh, God. And he was just like all over the place, crazy. And I can't remember what exactly happened, but I did. Oh. Oh, uh, now I know what happened. What? He brought in this woman who was pretending to be his mom. Okay. And I had to like 
kiss his mom or something like that. I don't even remember what it was or like hit on her or something. And that was the prank. And he came out and started like screaming at me and was like, that's my mom, get out of here. And I was like, uh, and then they were like, we got you. Ha <laughs> ha. And I'm like, this sucks. This sucks. I, I hate all of you. I, I, I'm sorry, but I don't like pranks. I, I feel like it's bad karma. Yeah. I think it's mean. I'm not a, I'm not a pranks. I like girl. a fun tasteful prank. I don't want one that's going to be right. like, you know, we're going to set your car on fire no, and you no. get to watch. You no, know? you can't cross the line. Yeah, no, no, there, no. There's no. a line and yes. it's, it's the karma line. I, I like I like scaring people like, bah! you know, but like right. not right, not traumatizing like people. No, no, no. I I think I'm just too sensitive. Ooh, uh, not, you know, I love to laugh and be crazy, but I'm too sensitive. So you, I can't believe that you did that. Well, you, well did, you, did you kiss his mom? I think so. It was like pretty a, good. I'm like a, ew! <laughs> no, no. I was what? like, oh, screech. <laughs> that freaks me out. No, no, I honestly don't remember out. what happened, but I think it was something along the lines of like, <sighs> yeah. Oh, you know what it was? No, 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 no. He was asking me stuff about like, would you do this for me? Would you do this for me? Would you do this for me? As an assistant? And yeah, and he was like, would you like kiss my mom if I told you to? And like the mom came out and he's like, kiss my mom, kiss her. And I was like, I don't want to. This show never aired, thank yeah, God. Yeah, wait, but that sounds like he was in on it. That's um, weird. Why would he even yeah. suggest something like that? That's weird. No. That's uh, really weird, actually. Mm -hmm. Here's another thing that's in right now. Horizontal striped shirts. Um, Won't be wearing it. I will. I won't. <laughs> you I'm, can. I'm still like, is this buzzing? I don't know if it is or not, but whatever. It's so cute on you. It's, Thank you. It's like almost sailory a little bit. I wanted to like, I want Nautical. Wanted, yeah, nautical, I nautica. Like that. Cute. Cool water, cologne. That's cute. That was that, my my yeah. vibe. Um, overalls are definitely making a comeback. Love. I'm wearing a jumpsuit today. Yeah. But, well, but, I, but overalls I love. Overalls are definitely making a comeback. They're Alyssa so Milano, cute. Not so much. Board shorts are in as well. What, um, what, what is board shorts? Board shorts. It's like the um What is that? It's like it's like the surfer surfer board shorts. Bobby Brown wore them. Here's this is Bobby Brown. He wore a black pair as a casual going out look. Um Bobby. Yeah. My friend. So it's yeah, it's like surfer yeah. skater shorts. Athletic shorts. Okay. Athletic okay. shorts. Okay. Like what was the Umbros? Umbros. Umbro? Umbro? No. Do you know what an Umbro is? Umbros? No. No one? Maybe that's a Texas thing. I don't know. No, Umbros. I don't know. I don't know. Look them up. Stuff will come up. Swirl patterns for Brandy. Uh, I don't so, like that. I don't, I like don't those. either. Uh, that, Faux fur coats, those definitely. Be, those cute. didn't go out. That, but that could be... No, those never went out. No. They'll never go out. No. Lil' Kim, Usher, all, crop shirts. Oh. Yeah, yeah. Crop shirts are huge right now, especially with the young gays. Perfect, perfect for displaying my stretch marks. That's nice. <laughs> crop shirts. Won't be wearing that. Also, I just love that, like, that was a picture of Janet Jackson with the <laughs> with pervert on the back of her shirt. <laughs> that was Janet. Pervert. Pervert 2. Oh, yes, Janet. Was Michael Pervert, Pervert 1? Pervert 2. <gasps> Justin! Shame on you. Well, Pervert 1 and is Pervert this like, 2. Is this the Jacksons <laughs> thing 1 and thing 2? You are really bad. Oh, my God. How are you so... You are the quickest, funniest human. Oh, thanks. I don't know how you do that. Um, how do you, how I don't so either, fast? and it scares how me sometimes. you so fast? Your brain is fucking amazing. Thanks. Am I allowed to say fuck? I've said 20 times already. It's fine. You're in a comedy club. All right, fine. You're totally good. Um, This woman, I want to give her a shout who, out. Who is this? She is on TikTok. Her name is Retro.Avocado. That's a cute name. She has popped up in my For You page, FYP, and she does all this 90s nostalgia videos, Ooh. and I live for it. Like, the first one that's pinned is absolutely my favorite. This is your mom in the 90s. Vibing to the Natural Wonders store soundtrack while you're fixated on the rain sticks and crystals. I have never felt more seen in my life. I was the kid who would go to the mall with his mom and go to the Discovery Channel store, play with the rain sticks and the little like jelly flashlight. I, I, I used to do. I, I used to. Yeah, I know. And I they, love the rain sticks. And I would like just hold stones of hematite. Right. <laughs> and like, you don't even know why. But and you're tiger just like, eye. Yeah. Right, right, right. The quartz or whatever, the crystals yeah. and the, but I love the rain sticks. So she, so this is what she does. So she does like That's, all these like 90s, 90s moms vibing in their apple themed kitchens. Where's hold on? It's got to be in one of the videos. Oh, she has to have someone. You know she has to have somewhere. hold on in there. And if she doesn't, she needs to. I mean, Faith Hill. I mean, my mom. There's that. There's that there's this that. was my mom. The rooster themed kitchen. My mom had a rooster themed kitchen. 
shabby chic country mom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Lots of like fake ivy in the kitchen. Yep. But that beat is very like, that could be someday somebody's at the same beat. Mm -hmm. Like that drum machine. It is. It is. Yeah. Yeah. Um, But it's so funny going back to the, the, uh, yeah. The rooster is so. I know. My mom, I think my mom actually had that rooster. I think we had one too at some point. But I remember just being that kid in um, the 90s that I think, and Landon and I were discussing this earlier, how the internet had come at that time and right. it opened us up to so much of the world that we just did not know. I didn't know what Celtic moods yeah, were, right. but was I in? Yes. yes. I didn't know what they were saying. Gregorian chant? Yeah. Get out of here. Gregorian. But I remember my my friends were jamming out to like MC Hammer and like Nirvana. I know. And I was jamming out to like dolphin <laughs> sound, <laughs> sounds of the ocean. Dolphin. Yeah, dolphin noises and like rainforest like ambiance <laughs> from the... From like, and my mom would be like, "You want to get this like rainforest CD?" And I'm like, "Yes, mom. See, I, I just want to like jam out in the, in the jungle." I love that stuff. I sleep with a sound machine. I, I love all those. Different Me too. Sounds. I but love. I, like as a child, like I was yeah. like, that's twelve, you, thirteen, right. and that's just what being you were like, into it. yes, yes, listening to. I'm like, mm, mm-hmm. there's like a peace thing inside of you. The there's sonar, like a, just the I just needed sonar. all the sonar waves. Yes. Um, let's talk about some of the top. Women of the 90s. Okay. Okay. And I want to know if you... Agree your thoughts, or, or thoughts. Thoughts. Okay. You've met them, whatever. Janet Jackson, or as I call her, pervert too. Um. <laughs> Janet is f- amazing, badass. Uh-huh. Just, uh, you know, I don't know. I, she's she's amazing. Still going. I know. I On know. tour, it looks amazing. But I've always felt like this... I don't know if it's like this, like sadness cloud around her and mm-hmm. I don't know why mm-hmm. there's there's just kind of been like maybe it's because she's just kind of shy and and soft-spoken but she's there's it's that real I've always thought of her like two different people mm-hmm. like it seems like she's private and shy but then at, when she gets on stage the performer comes out absolutely and I think that has to do with probably abu- abuse abuse <laughs> I think it's abuse but it's also there are many um performers who are like that oh, yeah. who are very introverted yeah. and then the minute they hit the stage the prince it's yeah it's just yeah God. You know what I, I mean? Know, I know. And my husband's I, like I that. I feel like Michael did that too. You know, oh, he very, sure did. Yeah. They um, come to life. Uh, God, God, Alanis. Uh, you know, if there was one CD that I burned the shit out jagged, of, Jagged, Jagged Little Pill. Oh my God. So the Alanis, um, so Wilson Phillips, we wrote Hold On and um, You're in Love mm-hmm. and many songs with Release w- Me. Well, we wrote Release Me, just the three of us, but her her co- collaborator and producer and, and co-writer is Glenn Ballard. And that's oh. who we that's who we worked with. So we we made these um demos and then they became the records in the studio where Alanis and Glenn made all their magic as well. Wow. It was his home studio in Encino. And I remember when when she came out and we were so happy for Alanis and Glenn. And um and we and so it was my idea to sing um ironic as the lambs on The Mass Singer. So, because we had to pick our song. So I said, I think we should do Ironic. Because uh, I could hear like, it's like, right. Yeah, and that and harmony. The harmony. Yeah. yeah. So, and so we got permission. And the publisher said, Alanis is only doing this because of you guys. Uh, so we got the permission because you need permission. Uh, and that was so, such a good album. Yeah, that it was, whole album. It was beyond. Uh, I mean, Hand in My Pocket and- Hand in My Pocket. But the one that got me was the one about the parents. Um, What's that one? Uh, the Sorry or- oh, sh- Perfect. Perfect. Holy hell. You look good, oh. girl. Oh. Mm. It was so like raw I know. And, and tragic. Mm-hmm. You, you know, know what one always got me? What? Was if you stayed like 11 minutes after the album. There was that, that thing? The hidden song. Oh, yeah. And it's about the woman yes. who breaks in yes. and takes a shower and her boyfriend's oh, not there. Dear. And she finds the letter. Oh, Would dear. You forgive me, love? Oh. You know what? For crying in your shower. I love yes. those. I love those damn hidden tracks. Oh. It's the good. They don't it, do that anymore, yeah, do I they? Know. No, I. Oh no, no, they do. They do. Ariana Grande did it. Oh, she did. Yeah. See, yeah, because like she eight, gets it. Yeah, because she gets it. Uh, so, so Alanis, I mean, at the top, uh. Mariah. You know. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> sorry. <laughs> All right. I'm, 
Okay. All right. She's okay. She's got a, a, a big range. Okay. I don't know. I just, I, I just, I feel like she's great and she knows she's great. She knows she's great. And she knows she's great. And, you know, I, I just, I have nothing else to say. Yeah. I, I, I think she's a great singer and everything. I do love, I do love some of her songs. Um, but, you know, can you keep scrolling? Yeah. Cheryl Crow. Love. Yes, we love a Cheryl love Crow. Love her. Uh, I just heard, um, yeah, I used to ride in them. them, them. Was that? Bram, bram. Oh, uh, every day. Yeah, is why do you run? Yeah. I mean, yeah, I, I love run. when I remember. Uh, I remember where I was when All I Want to Do oh. came on. I was at home in Texas and just got back home from school and watched MTV and that video came on, followed by Spice Girls, yes. Wannabe. Wannabe. And I was like, what is this? Followed by, no doubt, uh, Just a Girl, or I'm Just, just a, a Girl. girl. Yeah. yeah. Oh, man. Yeah. So and I was powerful like, and great. And this yeah. was right after, like, this was when I was like, oh, grunge is over. Yeah, yeah. Thank God. This, this Get was... me back into pop, please. And she came from like singing with Michael Jackson as mm -hmm. a backup oh, singer. Oh, yes, backup singer. Yeah, yeah. And Great I remember singer. every girl at the high school talent show, every girl at the high school talent show in the 90s who played a little bit of guitar yeah. would sing Strong Enough. Yeah, she's... Are you strong enough to be my man? I'm like, you're 16. <laughs> what are you talking about? She inspired a lot of people. Yeah. She still does. She's amazing. She's I love her. She's very real. I love her. Um, Taylor Dane. I love Taylor Taylor. Mm -hmm. She was um when when was she 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 was like late 80s. She was though, late right? 80s, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, she's she's, she's cool. Late 80s. I she's think she's still she's still doing stuff. Yes, she is. I did a Zoom, like my friend had a, a, a Zoom birthday party, like when COVID hit. Yeah. And she was there. Taylor Dane <laughs> Wow. Sang on the wow. Zoom. Wow. Yeah. She's actually she, a good singer. Showed up. She's still touring. There, our agents want like want Wendy, my sister, and my daughter Lola and I to go on this little tour with mm -hmm. Taylor. So we're thinking about it. It's like a girl's thing. So we're, we're thinking about it. She's very, very sweet. Yeah, um, she is sweet. Paul Abdul, who just got Paula. the award at the Queerities for the Ally Award. So, yeah. yeah. I, I really liked um, Hush Hush. I thought that was a really cool one of hers. Rush Rush. Rush Rush. Not what? Hush Hush. Did I just say Hush Hush? Yeah. You oh, said here, Rush Rush. <laughs> rush. And it was, it was great because David Archuleta uh, at the awards did like a whole montage of her hits. I just spent some time with David Archuleta, but that's that's a secret. Okay. Um, Melissa Etheridge. Love her. Mm -hmm. I got to play the, um, I did this thing for Girls Rising. They're a really great uh, girl group. They have a, a charity called Girls Rising. Antigone Rising is the name. But we did a show with at the Grammy Museum with Melissa. And I got uh, to play like the congas uh, with Melissa. I was doing percussion. It was really weird. But um, she, she was, loves slapping bongos. Fabulous. I slapped the bongos that night. Yep, yep. And, uh, um, you know, Melissa's a powerhouse. Oh, yeah. What can you say? I mean, oh. she's... Rock and roll. I mean, like she was like the rocker chick of the nineties. Yeah, she's like, like the Janis Joplin. Whatever. Yeah. she got a lot of force and power behind that voice. Sarah and then McLaughlin, Sarah McLaughlin. I mean, a beautiful, beautiful special uh, special energy around her. Oh, uh, yeah, I know. Yeah, she something. is a walking Discovery Channel. But all store. I can think of is the goddamn dog commercial. I can't. Yeah, she had forever. To, I mean, uh, I yeah, the pets. Sweet surrender. God, oh, love Adia. that song. Love, love. Uh, what yeah. was the one? It was um. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Not hold on, oh, no. not hold on. <laughs> um, I, will remember. I Will Remember was like the one they all sang at the funerals. That's beautiful Angel song. was the Angel. one with the dogs. Yeah. But the... Um, I can't think of it. Don't tell me. It's, it's, it's Fumbling Towards Ecstasy. Stumbling Towards Ecstasy, it was her first album. Yeah. And it was about like... S A. Okay. You know what I'm talking about, but no, it was like no. where she. No, I don't know what that where, is. Like she is a S A victim. Okay. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm talking about? Yes. But sexual she assault. sexual assault. Oh, yeah. oh. And um. Oh. And it's um. I'll mm. take I'll take your breath away. That was so out uh, and uh oh it doesn't matter but it's one of my favorites. I I don't remember. Um. It. But speaking of Pride, last year Mariah did um, Pride in L.A. Yeah, and this uh, and it's weird because we used to have Pride L.A. or Pride West Hollywood, West yeah. Hollywood, the mecca yep. of of LGBTQ, yep. like from the seventies and on, of course. right? Yep. And then they right split from Christopher Street a couple years mm -hmm. after COVID, and now we have West Hollywood Pride. 
LA Pride mm. and now even Hollywood Pride, huh. which is just weird. I'm like, can we all come together? But West is Hollywood like, is Hollywood. Like, why? It's like one mile away. It doesn't make any sense. It's huh. weird. So they they have now taken these two venues yeah. and they mm. try to outdo each other. So last year, West Hollywood Pride had Jesse Ware, who I'm obsessed with. Do you mm. know who Jesse Ware no. is? Oh. I'll send her your music. Okay. Oh my God. Send her. I'm going to send her your way. Um, and may, uh, who else? Who else? Who else? Uh, Grace Jones. Love her. Amazing. LA has. Slave to the Rhythm. Oh God. With a hula hoop. I loved, I loved Slave to the Rhythm. Everything. That, that song flipped me out Woo. when I was growing up. I mean, legend. I um, okay, and then yeah. LA had Mariah Carey and Megan Thee Stallion. And okay. I saw Mariah Carey. I was like, let's go see it. You know? Yeah. It her. <laughs> let's go see her. And, <laughs> She came out, they picked her up and put her down and she did the thing. She showed up, got the check. It was great. However, things are going to change this year okay. because West Hollywood Pride has announced that Kylie Minogue is going to headline oh boy. West Hollywood Pride. That's going to be great. I'm not ready for this. You're excited? Yes. I cannot. I can't. It's going to be Kylie Minogue, Janelle Monet, and Diplo and Friends. <gasps> Fabulous. It's going to be so much fun. We don't even know who and Friends are and I don't care. But when is it? I want to go. Yeah, we'll totally get tickets June 1st and 2nd of 2024. Uh, tickets go on sale Friday, March 15th at 10 a.m. Okay. It is. Go I just saw Kylie Minogue with Madonna. She just like jumped on stage with Madonna oh, when I, I was saw there. That. We all were just like, ah! I love it. We all exploded. She had the biggest hit of last year, Padam Padam. She just got a Grammy for it this this past she, February. She deserves everything that has come uh, her way. It's so. She's another good human. She's great. Yeah. And that like the the longevity of that career and yeah. like the fact that she just powers through. Uh here's uh here's the other acts. Uh we have Janelle Monet, Diplo and Friends. Oh God, here we go. Dochi, Ashniko, Noah Cyrus, Trixie Mattel with a DJ set. Kiki Palmer, uh Chanel, Trace. I think these I are just words. Big Frida, I know Sophie Ellis Baxter. Motor on the dance floor. Oh, yeah, yeah, yes. yeah. I like that song. Uh, Vincent, he was actually at LA Pride uh, mm -hmm. last year. So, yeah, it's going to be it's really, be really great. fun. Um, however, I'm is... like, what's LA going to do? Right. How do, you, how do you how do you top that? We'll see. Or bottom, if you're into that. You know what I mean? <laughs> we'll see what happens. Um, who do you think? I mean, Janet? How do you? I mean. I don't know. It, I, I, I have no idea. I know. It's a good one. Um, have you guys done Lady Gaga? Pride? Lady Gaga. That would be sick. I think you called it. I think she, I think that could be it. I think you're, I think you're right. Wouldn't it be weird if I was? I think you are. I think you're like a Laurel Canyon witch. Love it. <laughs> Let me do it. Manifest. Have I you guys done, shit. have you guys done prides before? Yeah. You have? Yeah. We did a uh, Chicago market days. Um, oh, that's oh, fun. I love doing pride. Are you yeah. kidding? Or, yeah. I just, it's a fun time. I love it. Oh, you know me and my gays. Um, yeah. <laughs> but I just, um, I just sang with, we sang Hold On with Dylan Mulvaney oh. at this private little, little two years of girlhood she celebrated. And uh, it was very special. Mm -hmm. Her family and friends was at the, um, the Peppermint right across from the, like Cedars. It's like part of the Mint, but it's called the Peppermint. Little club. It was like an art deco club. And then Cute. she had a, a little private party, but we sang Hold On with her. Wendy, um, my daughter, Lola and I, and um, yeah, they just posted like, these pictures and it was it was great. Which I will say, I got to see you sing "Hold On" with Doug at the karaoke. That was not okay because it was okay. I it was not. <laughs> see, I don't sing the lead on that song, uh -huh. and so my, it's out of my melody range. So, like, I was trying to do the harmony, but then Alyssa didn't remember the melody, so it was like I was like doing these like. Did you hear that, Alyssa? Harmonies Did on you my hear own. That? <laughs> I love her voice. Yes, I mean, yeah. I always tell her she's my little kitten, and I think she's got a great voice. But I, but mean, I think she. Everyone was drinking a lot. I wasn't, but you know, you were great, Macy I was Gray. Great. You were great. Oh, that's my thing. That was so. That's good. my weird party favor. Ah, yeah, I just I could. I don't know how, but I didn't just do you it. Channeled it. Just channel it, and I, I got to. I sang it to her here at the comedy store. Oh, like great. I looked out in the audience, and it was Macy Gray, no. and I like stopped my set, and I was like, I'm sorry, are you Macy Gray? Like just ass, you know, get to the point. And, she's, and, and she said, her. yeah. And, <laughs> and yeah. I said, I have to stop everything. Love that you did I've been that. singing this song at karaoke forever. Like I've won karaoke competitions. Wow. And yeah. we sang it in the original room. One of my favorite moments ever. Did she like it? She did. Of course she did. And then she walked out of the, she walked out, she was leaving and, and she was like, you're really good. I was like, thank you. That Aww. was like such a moment. It's cool. That's cool. Well, next year, if we have another um, chump event, I'm going to like 
do something like fun. We'll plan it. I think I want to do You Ought to Know because that other girl yes. did it. I want to do that. Ooh, that's a good that. one. That's yeah. a good one. So this is actually kind of exciting because the world is on fire. And I always like it when there's a little bit of joy that just springs. Banksy uh, has just confirmed a new London tree mural in his work. And this is it. Wow. I I I love that there's like, that he's just like this like Robin Hood of art. He'll just like sneak in or whoever it is. We don't know who Banksy is. I don't know who it is. I was going to ask you. No you were on clue. the Masked Singer. It could be. It could be could Banksy. Banksy. <laughs> yeah, it could be Banksy. It could be Banksy. Um, I, that's so cool. I mm -hmm. art freaks me out. Like I don't know how anybody. I can't draw a stick figure. So I can't when either. I, I'm what, terrible. I am horrible. My cousin Laura is so good at it. My 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 sister in law Frances. She's actually like a <sighs> painter in Tennessee, like professional. I don't know oh. how actually someone takes a pen or pencil or whatever, no, or a brush and creates something. I can't have no clue. And this no is clue. this is actually on the side of a building. I want to say it's a residential building, but look, that's actually a real tree, and he kind of put this like green moss behind it. That's where it pretty looks, cool. It's really cool. Wow. Because um, I thought that was, yeah, that's that's really, that's neat. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's clever to do that. But also I think it's like apartment buildings. I I, I believe it's, yeah, it I looks like it's this. apartment building complex. I love this. We need more of this in our world. I know, absolutely. We need more. So this is in Finsbury Park. Mm. It's green. Finsbury, Finsbury it's Park. It's also, it's clearly, it's in Finsbury. It's Finsbury. It shows green paint sprayed on a wall behind a cut back tree to look like foliage with a stencil of a person holding a sprayer next to it. So they've gathered around the mural, one saying they were proud. Their street has been chosen. I love this I mean, so much. But you know what pisses me off about what? this? What? Um, there's a Banksy mural in Salt Lake City, Utah. Okay. And they had to put glass up on it because it's in the wall. I'm going there uh, like in very soon. In Salt Lake City? Yeah. I'm look gonna for go. it. Look for the Banksy. I'm going to go look for um, it. Um, so what is it? it? It's just, it's. I, I don't remember what the painting is, but they've covered it because I'm afraid someone's going to, oh, you know, like, spray like, paint yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Just and like, you know on. someone will. Absolutely. But I want to know how much rent jumped. If oh. this is an apartment building. <laughs> like, Spike. Yeah. It's spiked. You that's... get a washer and dryer and an outside Banksy. <laughs> it's it's very, it's very beautiful. And, and this is why we need to protect the Banksy. Because you're going to have people like this. Yes. I don't know if you saw this story. What is this? An artist collective uh, proudly takes matters into their own hands to make an HBO marketing campaign more true to the episode that inspired oh, it. Oh, wow. So, yes, this is the marketing campaign wow. for Curb Your Enthusiasm. It says, catch is Kaftan. Shop now, catch is .com. It's been appropriately vandalized to mirror a joke from the March 10th episode that inspired the real-life billboard on Santa Monica Boulevard. I have to tell you, I secretly like this. I don't know why. It's kind of incredible. It's kind of fabulous. <laughs> I, I I don't know. I'm sorry to be mean, but I actually well, kind no, of like it. No, that's not mean at all. Um, I think I like the dick. That's what it is. I like that actual dick. So this is... <laughs> that's why. That's I don't know why. There's something wrong with me. I know. <laughs> It really, I should not say that, but I can't help Why it. Why not? All right, whatever. You know what? You have one life. Live it. Uh, a real-life billboard marketing, Susie Green's Catches Caftan from Curb Your Enthusiasm went up on Santa Monica Boulevard in West L.A. at the start of the week without the spray-painted dicks that made Larry David <laughs> laugh in last Sunday's episode. But an artist collective decided to remedy that early Friday morning. Um, in decline has proudly taken responsibility for the artistic touch that the HBO marketing department may or may not appreciate. L.A. has reached out for comment but hasn't heard back yet. Of course not. Um, I think it's kind of fantastic. I and it's, also it's I in West it's Hollywood. Who cares? I love it. What a what an appropriate we, place we, to put we, it. Yes, go ahead. So they actually vandalized this billboard that was <laughs> she's fake vandalized. She's cupping the ball. She knows what's up. I, I, this is just great. That's an expert right there. That is that is very good. Oh my God, that's him actually laughing at it? Well, that's in the episode. Oh, I see. This, yes. This is the, the actual episode. Yeah. Oh, this is and so this, great. And this is the real life. And then they threw up the oh. billboard and someone drew that on the billboard, correct? I mean, yes. Yeah. Don't yeah. ever take this down. So they, I, I love it. It was vandalized in the show and then they put this up on... Uh, Santa Monica, yeah. and then somebody actually vandalized it like it was in the show. It's perfect. It's perfect. Say no more. Love we it. have a WeHo That's art. Banksy. We got it. Here's another story. Web Come searchers web searchers for VPN swell, ugh, no pun intended, 400% in Texas as Pornhub blocks access. So Texas has blocked 
Pornhub. Okay. Because, sure. Why? Because it's Texas. It's like, don't mess with Texas when it comes to porn. Google data reveals. But you can have have guns and shit. Yeah. But you can't have. I'm from Texas and I'm always just like, what? What is going on? Wait, what? So Pornhub and uh, other affiliated adult websites pulled out (laughs) of the Lone Star State. Well, over its new law requiring all users to verify their age by providing a government issuing issued ID. All right. I mean, I understand some of that. So VPNs or virtual private networks allow internet users to encrypt their connections and obscure their locations to access region restricted content. The subscription based services have become increasingly popular in recent years, usually costing only a few dollars per month. So people are now changing their VPNs to be like, I'm in Florida. I'm Uh, in Massachusetts. Yes. So so they can still look at Pornhub. So they can still watch Pornhub. This is a good fix anything. I I see where Pornhub was going. Yeah. But, I mean, well, you know, you know once it, in a while I'll 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 watch a little little porn. <laughs> Why am I here What is in Carney Wilson's porn what? search? I've got to get some moisture forming. I'm fucking I fucking hell man. I need something to get this bitch going. <laughs> Something's gotta start, honestly. Really? <laughs> it's uh, honestly, it's wait, I, I what, need something. What, what is in what? What I mean, what is the search? Um, I like I like fucking. Okay, like plain. That's a fucking. start. Yeah, like just good old fashioned fucking. Like, like, like slapping. Like male, female. Ninety eight degrees. Yes. Is that a little the trigger? Ninety eight degrees. That's what it did for yeah. you. Yeah, and it's it's good. It gets me going a little bit sometimes. Dialogue, just sometimes. no dialogue. No, I don't like dialogue. Oh, I love dialogue. No, I don't. It makes me sick. I love a storyline. Hello, I listened to Dolphins when I was 13 on Jeez, a CD. You're, 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 I like storyline. I like relationship. Audio. You need the audio. What is the the, the you relationship? You Dolphins when you fuck. Like, no! <laughs> Dolphin noises Wait. turn you on. No, no, okay. no. No, no, no. no. no like, like, porpoise. Like right. a calming rain, oh, a thunder, okay. just, mm. you know, like fabric in the wind. I, I don't. <laughs> Your brain is really out there. I just don't, I, I don't know. I just don't love like the cheesy, I can't, I can't. You just like get into it. Yep. I just like, so I can hear the slapping and the whole thing. Mm-hmm. I, All right. I like that. I'll, I'll get well, going. Speaking of slapping, Billy Baldwin. <laughs> <laughs> Great transition. <laughs> oh shit. Billy Baldwin viciously claps back at Sharon Stone over her sliver sex claims. I have so much dirt on her. Saw this. <sighs> now, Okay. Billy is still married to China. Okay, he's like my brother-in-law, so right. let's, I have to, you know, be good. Sure, I'm cha- tread we'll be lightly. good. We'll be good. But there's nothing to even say. I yeah. mean, I'm, I'm, yeah. So Sharon Stone went on social media Tuesday after the actress claimed that producer Robert Evans pushed her to have sex with the actor mm-hmm. while they were filming Sliver in 1993, and Billy responded with, "Not sure why Sharon Stone keeps talking about me all these years later on X, yeah, formerly Twitter." Does she still have a crush on me or is she still hurt after all these years because I shunned her advances? <laughs> oh. <laughs> you know, I just think he's telling the truth. Yeah. I do. I think he's telling the truth. And who the hell knows what went on? I don't know. Who knows what went on? What was going on? Because he says, I have so much dirt on her, mm-hmm. it would make her head spin, but I've kept quiet. I Oof. wonder if I should write a book and tell the many, many disturbing, kinky, and unprofessional tales about Sharon. That might be fun. So the spat started when Sharon Stone told Louis Thoreau on his podcast that Evans encouraged her to sleep with Billy Baldwin in hopes of improving his on-screen performance in the thriller. That's really weird right there. I don't know why you would say that, that on a that's... podcast. Like you just said he's my brother-in-law or right. like he's a brother to right. me. But like suggest that you have sex with him before you have like, what? That's just weird. That's weird. I don't get it. Yeah, I and, don't either. I don't either. Um, Let's see. So like what, like so make their love scenes more like authentic? I guess so. Yeah, that's really, really, um, really not right, actually. I, I don't understand why, but also I have a confession to make. I was supposed to go see the movie Hocus Pocus and I snuck in to Sliver. Oh, because you, you wanted to see Billy. He's gorgeous. Yeah, he was really I mean, why would you? He's And it was the sexiest thing. Uh, like ever. And I remember she had like this like wow. glass volcano triangle 
that always kept making an appearance and she would like touch it and it was like on a coffee table. And also, right. um, I don't remember UB40's this. hit single, uh, Can't Help Falling in Love. Yeah, I, I just don't, I can't, I saw this movie, but I just don't remember it. I don't remember it at it's all. It's all the pot I smoke, Carney, my brain's gone. I have no clue. No I clue. feel like yeah. I met Britney Spears, Christina Aguilera, and Justin Timberlake have no idea, on like... the Mickey Mouse Club. <laughs> And I Wait, I don't remember it, but um, it was very sexy and so very, sexy, right, right, right. Oh, it but was. Did they so have chemistry? Hot. I don't remember. They did, right, or did they not? I mean, I feel like there was chemistry, but I also was just like it. It was acting, like, but like it was definitely like into voyeurism. Like, remember there was yeah, like yeah, all yeah, the yeah. cameras were set up in when, the apartments. When was this film? Ninety three. It came out in ninety four. Uh, ninety three. Three. I'm trying to remember when Billy and China got together. You know, I set them up. Did you? Well, not really set them up, but I knew that Billy had a crush on China. Ooh. We were flying that airline MGM. It was the one that went from LA to New York only. And it was like, he was in, he was in a section in front of us. And I said, she goes, I think he's kind of cute. And I said, walk past him and I'll see if he like checks your butt in the aisle. You know, you know, people look mm -hmm. walks. and so I'm like, if he does, then he, he thinks you're hot. And sure enough, that motherfucker, like he's, you know. He's looking, and I said, he did, he checked you out. And at uh, baggage claim, he asked for her number, so. Oh, uh, what a romance. See, yes. 90s rom-com. I knew. But also, That's like, right. yeah, Billy Baldwin was smoking hot. Gorgeous, he still is. And uh, it, he made an appearance in Clueless. Yeah. A couple years later, where they called yeah. him, he's such a Billy, such a Baldwin. And the Gilmore, what was he on, the Gilmore Girls, or? He's done a lot of stuff. Lots of stuff. I think he's got something new coming out too. But I mean, Sharon, like, yeah. stick to painting, girl. You know what? I bet Sharon Stone's Banksy. That's it. Secret Banksy. Something's something's off here. We'll we'll find out eventually. I don't know. Something's she was just at the right. Glad Awards. I don't think anybody asked her about it. But Billy doesn't lie. So Sharon Stone says the producer called me to his office. Um, who was once the producer of Paramount and produced box office hits such as The Godfather and Love Story. Big and producer. he's running around his office in sunglasses explaining to me that he slept with Ava Gardner and I should sleep with Billy Baldwin because if I slept with Billy Baldwin, Billy Baldwin's performance would get better. Would it, Sharon? Would it? <sighs> Baldwin wound up being nominated for the Golden Raz Award for Worst Actor for his turn as a video game designer. She'd previously recounted the incident in her 2021 memoir, The Beauty of Living Twice, but didn't name names at the time. But somehow, um, Billy got angry. He get, got angry and angry. He says, the story of the meeting I had with Bob Evans, imploring him to allow me to choreograph the final sex scene in the photo below so I wouldn't have to kiss Sharon is absolute legend. The actor even roped Janice Dickinson into his fiery missive. He says, did she say to her gal pal Janice Dickinson the day after I screen tested and ran into them on our MGM Grand flight back to New York? MGM Grand. Yep. I'm going to make him fall so hard for me, it's going to make his head spin. <gasps> Wait a Was minute. Was China on that flight? I think so. I think that's the fucking flight. What? Was China, what? Were you on that flight with I Janice? I think I was on that flight. <laughs> What's happening here? That's wild. I'm getting dizzy. That's weird. That is weird. Whoa. So we got to find out if Sharon Stone and Janice Dickinson were on that flight that you and China were on with Billy Baldwin. Why do I feel like Janice Dickinson was on that flight? Because Janice Dickinson's always on some side of flight. <laughs> She's always soaring high these days. <laughs> She's sober, she's, apparently. She, well, yeah, I she saw is. her at a meeting one time. I, she's sober. I have an amazing Janice Dickinson story. She is out there. Oh, I, Woo! Ooh, but God bless her. It was yeah, one of it was one of my favorite nights in Hollywood <laughs> because it was her, and hopefully I can get her on this show one day and we can reminisce. But she's got stories. She, oh, and I want to hear them all. I know. Um, so let's okay. play a game called Hold On or Release Me, okay. where we ask Carney Wilson, do we hold on to these special pictures of stock footage from the 90s? Or we say, okay. you know what? No, let's release me. Okay. Let's, we don't so need it. hold on or release me. Hold on or release me. Okay. So we'll, this is the first one. It's kind of a iconic image. There was always like a time where like puppies were in a basket of some sort. It was cute, nostalgic. What do you think? Forever hold on. Forever I, hold on. Are forever. you a dog person? Oh, God, yeah. Yeah. And puppies, I mean, I can't even. I know. The, the um, here's one. Uh, oh, man buns. God. Go, release, release me now. Release me. What about me. the mullet for millennials? Just release it all. I don't know. Release well, it all. kind of work on some people. No, they don't. Okay, release me. Gender reveal parties. Oh, uh, well, 
I don't know. I'm in the middle. Uh, to each his own, whatever. How about um What about what about gender reveal parties that start forest fires? <laughs> That's really fucking weird. They do. Did you see the one with the guy in the plane? Like the plane crashed oh, over? The- yes. Right. Oh, that was messed God. up. That was sad. That it's was scary. So, it's terrifying. That was not good. Um, but I also love a gender reveal when like, my favorite one is the little girl with the black balloon and she gets into a little fight. Or she has a little tantrum and then the she lets go of the balloon and they're like, no. Oh, and shit. And there's no reveal. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Jesus. So I, and to this day, we still don't know that baby's gender. Oh, for God's I know. sake. I'm going to say, hold on, because people people like it and it's exciting. And if they want to do that, then then good. More power to them. Okay. Um, I personally say release me on gender reveal parties. However, I do say hold on to dressing up your babies like bumblebees and uh, baby acorns. There is nothing cuter. Like the Ann Gettys. The Ann Gettys. The Ann Gettys. Ann Gettys. You can't get cuter than this. Oh. I just don't know how they capture it. I, mean, I never had this oh. done. How do they make it happen? I don't well, know. Well, they give them the old gypsy rose teaspoon of mercury. <laughs> and you are just, terrible. Just a nice little, like, little taste to the neck. Right. And then they dress them up like a little panda bear. That's so cute. I mean, do you remember the peas in the pods? And of then there was course. like the little pixie on the mushroom. Oh God, the most delicate, cutest ever. We all loved them. There was, and the iconic one was the like, little one with the little lily. He was like a lily pad. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. There's a whole There's a whole book. There's tons of books Moms and stuff. Moms had yeah. those calendars of course. everywhere. I, I did, so, of course. Um, oh God, that's like almost my, yeah, that's. A vacation. Oh. Beach, resort, hold huh. on, release. I'm going to Mexico, Ooh. Um, going to Cancun in May. Mm-hmm. And I've never, that is what I want forever, every day. This is Me what too. I, like I do hypnosis sometimes and that's what I picture myself. Right there. That's all I want right there. That's, that's you know what? That's peace and serenity. To I'm me. gonna hold on to this Forever. as well as release me. Why? Because no, release me. Oh, release me. <laughs> like just, just get me out of get, here. Get me there and yes. Release me and to, let to me that just, place. Uh, that is beautiful. Yeah. So, it's, yes. I, I wonder it's gotta that's gotta be Hawaii or whatever. Oh I, it kinda God. Looks, yeah, it kind of does. Avocado toast. Hold ah. hold on, release me. Oh, shove it in. <laughs> Jesus. We, we create a new category. I know. I have, I can, I mean, I'm salivating. I know. Like My, a, of any, of any kind. Best avocado uh, toast ever. It's easy. What? Everything bagel seasoning, a little bit of chili fix. That's nice. That's it. Yeah. So, salt. You got to have a little salt. salt. Mm-hmm. Um, I like sourdough bread. Mm-hmm. Although I haven't had gluten. Get ready. Six months. Wow. Good for you. Yeah. No sugar, no gluten. But oh. that is, that is, it's not the same on gluten-free toast, but apparently there's like a sourdough at Sprouts. It's like the best ever. Yeah. But that is one of, one of my favorite things in the entire world. Well, don't tell Mama Cass. All right. Moving on. <laughs> you are horrible. <laughs> God, I hope Owen doesn't see this. What about camping? Or is Carney? Uh, no. Fucking no. No. Uh uh-uh. uh. Glamping. I would rather eat shit than go camping. I hate. So release me is what you're thought. saying in more ways than one. Oh, run. Release me. Not, and not run. A, what about glamping? Like, no. Glamping. How is that even possible? You go. If you're in the woods, let's yeah. start there. The woods are so scary anyway. Yeah. Um, like a cabin, like a like an Airbnb. No, still, <laughs> bears can can scent food and knock door. They open doors apparently. Those are velociraptors. Yeah. No, they're I'm, no 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 no. I'm not going. Okay, doesn't matter how glamorous it is. No. Nope. Okay, what about complicated skincare? I love it all. Yeah, I mean, I love it, just a basic wash, moisturizer, eye cream, but I'll look through it and, and see what I like. Yeah, yeah, serums, I, all kinds of shit. I love the process of it. Evan will straight up like do the whole thing. Good. Like he'll just be like, I'm just need to just yeah, mm, the, the, mm, yeah, yeah. Mm, mm. I I I get my pretty boy. Just that's my moisturizer. Okay. It does redness. It's it's like a six in one. It's my favorite. And then just do a little like concealer. But like this this kind of stresses me out a little I, bit. I feel like I don't this, like tiny bottles. Yeah. T- well, I always feel like everything's like gone bad. Or like or it's like it expired. <laughs> so I'm always scared to put something on. But or that it's gonna like peel my skin like mm-hmm. acid of nowhere. But this is kind of like possibilities for me. Like mm-hmm. you never know what it's gonna as do. As long as it's organized. I yeah, mean, yeah. I am this this actually looks like my medicine cabinet when I open it and I'm like, oh that's not very organized. <sighs> I Why know. can't they color coordinate? But I I get it. But mm-hmm. I, I like this. Okay. I say hold on to that. Um, Apple Vision Pro. Horrible. I, Hold I have, on, release no, me. No, I have like vertigo, so this, I can't. I'm the same I'm, way. I look and I'm dizzy. I can't. I, I know, no I know. Whatsoever. Have you ever, you've never done uh, VR at all? No interest whatsoever. It's, it's 
It's fun, but I mean, you can definitely get lost. Whoa. It reminds me of the lawnmower man. I can't do it. <laughs> I, and, I'm not into it. But I've seen people like walking around. There was there was some guy like last week where they showed him like driving. He was in yeah. his driving, uh, the, the yeah. self-driving Tesla. Right. And he's like, no, that's like schizophrenia. That's oh, really weird to me. No, thanks. Yeah. No, thanks. Um, hot sauce. Hold I'm, on. Release me. You know what? <sighs> I'm not crazy about hot sauce. Oh. I, I, I I do like a little Tabasco once in a while, but I just, I don't, I'm not good with it. I love it. You do? Oh my God. It's in my blood. Mm. I mean, I, I, get, I grew up on Pace Picani sauce. It was Pace. San Antonio salsa right there. I actually like that. I, you like Pace Picani sauce? Actually, it's kind of like- It's in my it's in my refrigerator right now. It's a safe salsa. It is safe. Salsa. So that's how far Very I go. Very safe salsa. There's your answer for me. But now everyone's just like, you know- Buffalo demon taint I flavor, and you're like, is what the hell? What the fuck? This is called Four Horsemen uh, <laughs> Four of the Horsemen. Apocalypse. You know, <laughs> I'm it, too scared of it. I'm, I'm just scared of it. I like a good crystal hot sauce from Louisiana. Yeah, but I'll, I'll be adventurous. I love, I love hot sauce more than me. Yeah, uh, matcha lattes. Nope, nope, no. Nope. Me nope. neither. I don't get them. Don't like it at all. I hate them too. I like, I like green tea ice cream a little bit. Okay. But anything matcha. Bleh. Oh, I don't get it. Nope. Release me now. Ugh, release. Me. I don't understand it. I never understood them, and I, I never will. I know a lot of people that love it, but I don't. Yeah, sushi uh, beyond. I'm ready. To sushi. Eat. I'm ready to go f fly through the screen. Yeah. <laughs> I love. There she goes. There she goes. Uh, flying I'm, I'm, for food. Sushi. Diving for food. <laughs> sushi any day. Hold on. Like oh, please, please, please. I love sushi. Hold on to it now. And finally, carne asada. No, well. I'm just. <laughs> How am I? I'm like, yes. I, I to of course. Which, how is that not a drag queen? I mean, well, like it, a carne, it, it is. Carne if you asada. Google it, it would, you would find carne asada. She has to be there. Although the Chick fil A video was a little insulting. Can we talk about that for um, a second? She was I'm so glad you brought table. that up. <laughs> I was not that fat. I'm sorry. Thanks for the compliment, but that was Willem. It wasn't. I wasn't like fucking Jonah the Whale. Can we, can we Google or whatever his it name was? was. Willem Detox and Vicky Vox. And yes, hold on. It was Willem Detox and Vicky Vox, and you you was, you said Vicky was too Vicky too big. was too big, too big. Right. Yeah. Even though I loved it and it was funny and great, it but was Vicky was a little big for for yes. Ms. And, Wilson. and this is a uh, parody of. Wilson Phillips, uh, hold on, and they did Chow Down at Chick Fil A. Yeah, Chow Down at Chick Fil A. This, that was during the uh, Chick Fil A. The whole uh, uh, whatever. Don't it's like called. gay people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Prop eight, all that kind of stuff. God, that made and me so, so mad. Oh, that's so funny. I always wondered what you thought. Chick Fil A sucks, by the way. Ooh, it's so bad. Those are I'm some sorry. fighting words. No, here's I don't the like thing. It at all. Here's I the think thing. It's, it's it like tastes good. I feel that way about In and Out. Oh, <gasps> I love In and Out. That's why we're opposites attract. You, you don't like dull. you don't like the you don't like the 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 meat. No. You like the flavor of the meat. No. I don't like any of it. Protein style double cheese with extra sauce. Yeah. Ooh. No. I I don't know. I'm. I do. The I fries like, are so good. I mean, the China wig though. Seriously. No, you know I know Will. I know Detox, and I know Vicky. Actually, she's not as big as I thought. Yeah. No. <laughs> That looks like Britney Spears, actually. That's Willem. That yeah. looks like China. Okay, I mean, that... the China wig. I mean, this went so viral. Yeah, it this... was such. Uh, wow. Okay. Oh, yeah. Shout out at Chick fil A. So good. Uh, That's funny. And if you don't know what we're talking about, just it's YouTube. Cute. Shout out at Chick fil A. Chick fil A. <laughs> So good. That's really so cute good. that they did that. It was so great. It was Aww, such a moment. It I was, know. Uh, and such an homage. It was an uh, homage. Well, Carney, that's the it. That's the end of the I show. I love you. I, I loved love it. You. It was great. Can you tell, please? So please much fun. Whatever you have coming up, dates on the road, all of it, where to find you. You know, just you. There, Wilson Phillips has concerts. We're going to be at the, uh, on July 13th, we're at the California uh, State Fair in oh, cool. Sacramento. So that's going to be a lot of fun. Oh, fuck. July 13th, Wilson Phillips show, full band show. And then uh, I guess you could just go to like 
Wilson Phillips, I don't know. Dot, 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 I don't know. <laughs> Wilson Phillips, I don't know. Dot com. That <laughs> is not real, Carney. They're, they're, yeah, we're, we're doing shows again. And uh, I do have a TV project. It's out April uh, 16th, but you're going to have to look. You'll find out more later. Yeah, I can't announce it yet. She can't announce it yet, but April but 16th. It's coming out. There's a new show coming in out. your calendars. Yeah, you'll, you'll find it. Um, and make sure to listen to her on Jeff Lewis Live. Yes, of as course. Well. Um, of course. And Thank you, like, so Thank much. You. This was so wonderful you. having you. I love you. And I just think you're just the best. <laughs> you're and I'm glad I know you. I'm glad I know you. Oh, meow. And we will see you next time here on the Just Saying Podcast. You guys have a fantastic week. We'll see you next time. Bye. 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 B